Hello again from Digicore Things. Like many, I have a number of projects that have previously stalled, for various reasons. One of those projects was my hexadecimal keypad journey. This project was initiated when I dug out of storage my first video computer that I built way back around 1979. It was the Dream 6800 computer, which was designed by Michael Buer. Hopefully I've pronounced Michael's surname correctly, and was published in Electronics Australia magazine in 1979. The Dream 6800 was a Motorola 6800 based computer board, featuring one kilobyte of ROM, one kilobyte of RAM, and a 64 by 32 pixel black and white video display output, created with discrete 7400 series TTL and 4000 series CMOS ICs. The Dream 6800's 1K ROM was loaded with ChipOS, which provided the Chip8 programming language. Chip8 was originally featured on the RCA Cosmac VIP computer board that was available at the time. The RCA Cosmac VIP was based on the RCA 1802 microprocessor. The Dream 6800 was controlled with a hexadecimal keypad, which was a quite common input device with early low-cost single-board microcomputers in the late 70s. But most of the self-contained microprocessor boards around this time typically used seven-segment displays for their output instead of a graphical video interface. I still have my original hex keypad, which I used with the Dream 6800. As you can see, this was quite a nice mechanical keyboard, designed specifically for hexadecimal use with 0 to 9 and ADF keycap legends. My keypad got a lot of use and I do recall it being quite comfortable for long periods of use, keying in the many bytes required when manually loading or developing a program in these early days. Note that hex keypads of the day were typically wired in a 4x4 matrix for the 16 hex decimal keys, usually also with one or two additional control keys. The 4x4 matrix was typically interfaced via an 8-bit I.O. port. In the Dream 6800 case, this was port A of a 6821 PIA chip. When I did a search online, I found that hexadecimal keypads are now almost impossible to buy, that is, real mechanical hexadecimal keypads. There are cheap membrane switch keypads available, but that's not something I'd enjoy using. So this got me on the path of designing my own hex keypad for use in early retro computing projects. First, I designed a budget hexadecimal matrix keypad using 12 by 12 mm tactile push button switches on a PCB with the keycap legend silk screened alongside each push button switch. I then went on to design my ultimate hexadecimal keypad version based on Cherry MX key switches, of course. Finalising the best way to implement keycaps that would satisfy my vision of the ultimate hex keypad is where this project was stalled until now. But first, what follows in this part one is an unpublished video that I made around two years ago showing the first build of the initial tactile switch based budget version of my hex keypad. Let's take a look. Okay, so the courier just arrived with the latest parcel from JLC PCB. I think this is a, this is a small box because it's only got a couple of um, PCBs in that I ordered. Um, let's open her up and have a look. And what have we got today? Can open a key ring. Thank you, JLC. And got a couple of boards here. Just pull them out of the box and we'll get rid of the box. Um, okay, that's my hexadecimal keypad prototype. And I've got a few more of my 8 bit LED thing PCBs. It's a panel. Um, 4x5. Okay, let's put those aside and let's have a look at our 
hexadecimal PCB prototype. Looks good. I'll open her up. Uh, about time I um, put a new blade in this knife, I think. Ripper open. No. And here we go. Well, the silk screens come out quite nice. And these are supposed to be the blue PCBs, but they look as though they've got more of a a green tinge on them than uh, my last boards. Other than that, they look quite good. Let's grab some switches. Let's move those over there. See what these look like. So these are my um, little tactile key switches I got for this little project, which uh, the um, the waterproof variant, which actually gives it a quite a nice uh, finish or tidy finish anyway. Now the true test. Let's see if I got my um, hole sizes correct. Yeah, they just snap into place quite nicely. Nice tactile feel that. Okay, maybe I should uh, solder one of these up and have a play. Mm, how many switches do I need? We've got a 4x4 four four matrix plus 2 for the reset and function buttons. Um, so that's 18, 18 key switches. Okay, let's pop all these through. Oop, that's not the way to do it. Need to check the straightness of the pin before I put them in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll just say E. C D E and F uh, it's looking pretty good. Move those out of the way, find Mr. Soldering on. And we'll see if we can get some of these soldered in place. Yeah, and that uh, key spacing is really good. So that's the standard um, 0.75 inch or 19 millimeter key spacing. So it feels not that I'm much of a touch typist, but it feels feels the right spacing, so that's good, just like a normal keyboard. 
All right, so I'm going to need a bit of solder. Bit of heat for our iron. ATO, let's flip her over. <laughs> Should be pretty straightforward. Get that out of the uh, layer of the light. And let's see. I imagine I'll fast forward this. Pretty boring watching me solder these. You know. 18 switches times 4 solder joints per switch 36, 72 72 solder joints to do Right, it's more soldered. Pretty happy with those. Let's uh, have a quick look. quite nice. Let's get some headers on there, eh? Okay, what do we need? An 8 pin and a 3 pin. So let's snip off 3 and an 8. 4, 6, Eight. Drop them in. Take, uh, I'll take the pin ones first so I can just make sure they're reasonably straight. up a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Start of the rest. 
Then I'll just need some standoffs. And the keyboard should be ready to go. And the last three. It's the second connector for the, uh, the plus two switches, the reset and function. Right. Turn that pile around, shouldn't I? Needs to have them facing the right way. Well, that looks pretty good. Um, see how it goes with a um, breadboard. A breadboard sitting around here somewhere. Let's have a look. Need some PCB standoffs, and uh, I think we'd be in business. So, yeah, what have I got? Got a couple of 10 more spaces here they'll do for the moment. Um, just put them on the bottom on the bottom row. The top, top supported by the breadboard. So if I just put these on the bottom row, that'll just provide some support. Got some, uh, got some black nylon screws somewhere which would probably be a nicer uh, nicer look these will do for the meantime Five, six, A, B, D, three, two, five. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, we'll have to give the uh, keyboard a test out next. But that will do for now. That's it. Thanks for watching.